Hey, what's up guys? It's Darkroom Duels, and today I'm going to be doing some Magical Musketeer Test Hands. So I really love this deck because it is an awesome deck that I actually carry around all the time with me, that I carry to like local tournaments and stuff like that, because it's a really good deck that puts multiple negations on board and can even special summon a bunch of monsters out of the deck now that we have Magical Musketeer Max. Magical Musketeer Max has been out for a little while now, but it just made this deck so much better when it got released. So I'm really excited to show you guys this deck, and we're going to get straight on this, so don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell on there so you can come part of Notification Squad, and definitely check out the Patreon down in the description below, because we have some awesome rewards for you guys, like getting your name in the description of every single video, getting a signed card sent to you in the mail, or even getting to request a deck profile on the channel as well. So, let's get straight on into this. So basically, if you guys don't know what Magical Musketeers do, let's give you a brief rundown of what they do. All your main deck Magical Musketeers share the same ability of, during either player's turn, you can activate Magical Musket spells and traps from your hand, and if a spell or trap is activated in this card's column, then you can add a Magical Musket card from your deck to your hand. They don't share that particular ability, they share the particular ability of being able to activate Magical Musket spells or traps during either player's turn from your hand. And if spells and traps are activated in the column, then they get particular abilities, which is really cool. I really like that ability, because it basically turns your entire hand into a bunch of hand traps, which is really neat. So let's get straight on into this. I'm going to do what I normally do, um, and show you guys a couple of test hands before we actually get into the um, playing out the test hands. I really like that idea for this because it shows you basically five test hands for the price of two. So let's get into this and see what we can do. So basically this deck can put out easily between three to four negates every single turn in the forms of Solemn Judgment, Nibiru, stuff like um, Magical Musketeer Cross Domination. There's just so many different ways that you can go through this deck to put multiple negations on board, which is super neat. So let's go ahead and draw our first test hand, which is going to be a Magical Musketeer Wild, Called by the Grave, which is our first negate, Kid Brave, Nibiru, and our copy of Ash. So usually in Magical Musket, I want to go first anyways. But let's say that we go, let's just say we go first. This is totally fine. We have three negates in hand. Um, and we also have the effect of Kid Braid that can dig us into the deck a little bit deeper. Which is a really good hand, because you have all three of these to get rid of an opponent's field. You have something to negate for a hand trap. And you have something that's a spell card to activate under the Kid Brave to discard the wild to be able to go into draw two more. Which is super nice. And let's just say that we did draw for our next turn um, and went second. We have the Cosmic Cyclone, and we probably would have dropped the Nibiru anyways if we were going first. You drop the Nibiru and have that card out of your hand and the Ash Blossom. And then when you go into your turn, you have the Kid Brave that'll let you draw two more and the Cosmic Cyclone to be able to do all sorts of stuff by getting back rid of their back row. Because you already have getting rid of their back row with the Cosmic Cyclone and getting rid of their field with the Nibiru, which is really cool. So, let's go into our second test hand and see what we can draw out of the deck um, I, I really think that that's, oh, that was actually a really good hand. Um, I would have preferred to see some Magical Musketeer Spell and Traps in that hand, like a Desperado or a Magical Musketeer Cross Domination. That would have been really nice to be able to see something like that. But let's see what we can get, because Desperado is such a good card. It doesn't look like much, but it is. So we're going to get Ash Blossom, we're going to get Calamity, one copy of Caspar. Caspar is really good because it's basically of, hey, I'm going to grab anything you want. Cosmic Cyclone, really good, because you can activate this, pop a spell or a trap, and then uh, put it in the same column as your cast bar, and then be able to search anything you want, and basically get rid of one of their back row, and a second cast bar. That's not terrible. Let's say we're going second this time, and draw into a card, which is a Monster Reborn. That's really not bad, because you're basically walking with two Monster Reborns. You have something that can pop back row, or banish back row, especially if you're playing against, like, Salamangrate, or the ever, you know newish meta deck which is Eldledge, you have something to get rid of their back row because Cosmic Cyclone is a fantastic out to the majority of Eldledge decks because this card banishes the card so they don't get their secondary effect from the graveyard which is super helpful. And with this you're able to search Cross Domination which can pop cards on their side, or not pop but negate effects and reduce monsters attack points to zero or you can search Desperado which is still pretty good. And you have a backup one if it does get destroyed that you can Monster Reborn one of your uh, cast bars back from the graveyard. So, again, pretty good hand. The only thing I'd really like to see, it's not bad at all. The only thing I really would love to see is something like a Starfire in one of these hands or maybe even a... 
like I said, a Desperado or a Cross Domination, but we had pretty much Cross Domination because we could search either Desperado or Cross Domination off of the Caspar. So that's really nice seeing Caspar in the hand, which is really, really, really nice. So let's get into the last playout test hand or the play test hand, and then we'll actually do a playout test hand. So for this hand, we're going to get, that's, that's what I'm looking for. This is a top tier Magical Musketeer hand, I have to say. Uh, the only thing that can make this better is if I top decked a copy of Starfire, which we got Nibiru. That, no, never mind. Nibiru is even better. Um, that's not bad at all because we have the Nibiru for a backup play. We have something to pop, something to gate something really to negate, and we have a cast bar to deal with cards on the field because you could actually just normal summon the cast bar, activate either the cross dom or the desperado, and then set the judgment under the cast bar to negate something the following turn against your opponent because they're going to do something which triggers your cast bar again next turn to search something like a cross dom or a desperado, depending on what you need it. And if your opponent swarmed you, you always have the Nibiru, which giving up the one copy of cast bar that you probably already used with the judgment it's not that big of a deal because you're going to be able to pop it next turn if you draw into a monster which we're going to get something to search and we're going to get some more play so we have a really good that is like an ideal right there test hand or a opening hand for your magical musketeers the fiendish deal is nice too because it's going to protect your monsters from being able to destroy by card effects as well. And if your opponent does get rid of it, then you get a search, which is really nice. That was that was a, a amazing hand. So let's get into our play hand. So we're going to go first on the first one, I guess. And we'll go second on the second test hand. So this deck is not really complicated. Basically, you run off of... It's kind of like old school Yu-Gi-Oh! a little bit. Because you're just normal summoning one monster. Maybe special summoning a monster to your side of the field. And and then you use a lot of spells and traps to deal with your opponent's stuff, which is really, really where this deck excels. So let's see what we can get off of our first actual playing out hand. So for our first hand, we're going to draw into a cast bar. So that's already really good because you've got search ability, cross domination. Now you have search and you have a negation. You have a second cast bar just in case the first one goes out. Uh, Fiendish Shield, which is really good. And a judgment. Okay, this is a fantastic going first hand because you can do something as simple as normal summon the cast bar to your side of the field and then set the judgment under it. And then you could also set the fiendish deal maybe right here. The only thing that you have to keep in mind is about this deck is because they're continuous spells and traps, when you put them in this column with Magical Musketeers, then it makes it so your opponent, like if you, this was here, it would lock his effect down. So you want to kind of avoid that zone from now on because of that ability. Now, if, since I'm going first, let's just say that my obviously my opponent doesn't have anything, and I'm not really going to search anything this turn because I just set the judgment. I do have two negates in hand because I do have the cross domination, and I have the solemn judgment. So if my opponent went on their turn, because that's a lot of what this deck is going to be, is how you're going to respond to your opponent. If when they activate something that I know I need to, I need to challenge, I'm going to activate like solemn judgment just to get rid of it and then once the solemn judgment goes to the graveyard i get to search off of the cast bar so when i get search off the cast bar i'm going to search either um i can add any magical musket card from my deck to my hand so at this point you have a little bit of an option since you do have a cast bar in your hand you can really sacrifice that cast bar and search something else that's a monster is what i would normally do so I'm going to search something as simple as like a Starfire, because then I can activate its effect during my turn to special summon another monster, which is really, really helpful. Um, this is going to prevent my opponent. I can actually chain this to stuff to make it so they can't destroy my monsters, which is really nice. Um, I really like that ability of being able to protect my monsters. So we're just going to say... We're going to say, which usually happens in Magical Musketeers, that your opponent's going to attack into you and destroy the cast bar. So you have a little bit of an option here. You can actually sacrifice the cast bar and say, okay, the cast bar is gone and not activate the Fiendish Deal. We can keep the Fiendish Deal face down because if you or your opponent attacks into you, you can just activate the Cross Dom and be able to reduce the opponent's monster's attack to zero and the cast bar will attack into it and beat over it, which is cool. 
Um, it won't resolve again because it's a once per turn effect, but we have some really good other combos that you can go into. So let's go ahead and go into our turn three. Your opponent's going to pass, and you're going to go into your turn. So depending on how many monsters they have on their side of the field, we have a lot of responses that we have just with these two cards in our hand and one set spell or trap. So let's go ahead and draw into our card, which is another judgment. So that's really good to draw into another judgment because you can do something as simple as this. You can normal summon the Starfire to your side of the field to this position and activate the Fiendish Deal. The Fiendish Deal is then going to trigger letting you add from your deck to your hand or special summon from your deck to your hand a Magical Musketeer. So let's special summon something like... You could do something as simple as a Calamity, okay? So at this point, you have two options. You have two really, really good options at this point. You could either go Utopia Double and OTK your opponent if they'd left a monster on the field that has less than 2,000 attack points and do something like this, um, which would be you overlay like this. Let me show you this first. We'll overlay like this, summon Utopia Double, detach a material from the Utopia Double, then search our copy of Double or Nothing from the deck. Once we get that copy of Double or Nothing from the deck, you pretty much have game if they have a monster that has less than 2,000 attack, which is really, really nice. Um, we also have another option that I'll show you guys in just one second. So then, after you overlay the Utopia Double, you're going to overlay the Utopia on top of it, and then immediately swing at your opponent, detach a material to negate the attack, and then drop the double or nothing, making him go to 10,000 and swinging over your opponent's monster. So let's backtrack a little bit, and let me show you another option that you have for this test hand. So we're going to backtrack to where we have both of these monsters on the field like we did originally, which were like this. Now our other option that we have is that depending on how many monsters our opponent has on their side of the field depends on what we can do. So let's say, for instance, I would still grab Calamity, because you have a live Caspar in your graveyard that if you can get a Spell or Trap, that you can immediately go into a play. So let's just say that our opponent has three monsters on the field. Two, mon two monsters or three monsters on the field. Let's say three, okay? Um, we're going to link away our Caspar or our Starfire and go into Magical Musketeer Max up here. Magical Musketeer Max's effect, if you guys don't know what this card does, is absolutely insane. Let's do a quick zoom in of this and do a quick read -a So what we do with this card is you link summon this card using a Magical Musketeer monster. It's a link one monster, and it lets you add Magical Musket spells or traps with different names from your deck to your hand up to the number of monsters your opponent controls. Or special summon Magical Musketeer monsters with different names from your deck up to the number of spells and traps your opponent controls. Well, usually you're going to resolve the first effect where you're going to add those spells and traps, which is really good. Let's say that they have three monsters on their side of the field. So we're going to add three spells or traps from our deck to our hand, which is cool. So we're going to add something like Cross Domination, which is going to be our first target always, a copy of um, maybe, maybe Last Stand, and a Desperado is what I would always go for because you have a pop, a negate, and a negate. So you have two negates and a pop, which is going to be basically what you're going to want to do. Um, what I normally do first is I would activate the Desperado under the Calamities, or, or Calamity. Calamity's effect is going to trigger special summoning a copy of a Magical Musketeer from the graveyard, because she's basically Monster Reborn. We're going to put our Caspar on the field. Don't summon him here. Don't make that mistake. Put him here, or put him in any of the other zones. The other thing that you want to watch for while you're playing your Magical Musketeer deck is to put them in the columns that your opponent has spells or traps. Let's just say that this is my opponent's field and they have a monster here. What I'll do is, is I'll actually summon my Magical Musketeer in the same column as their spell or trap because if they activate it, it's going to trigger my Magical Musketeer monster, which is really cool. So, let's say they didn't have a monster that had more than 2,000 attack. This is the route I would start going. So then I'm going to activate a copy of my Cross Domination to reduce an opponent's monster down to zero and negate its effects for the turn. If my opponent activates anything, I do have the last stand in my hand, then it can negate its spell or trap, which is going to help out a lot. The cast bar is now going to search the deck for another card, which is going to be really beneficial. You could actually search the deck for something as simple as, um, let's just see. Where's Crooked Crown? You could grab Crooked Crown is what I'd probably grab. Um, Cricket Crown, because that's going to let you special summon another Magical Musketeer from your hand, which is going to get you four or three Link Monster, or a Link Four Monster, pretty much for free on your side of the field, which is going to be really beneficial. It is going to lock you out of your monster's effects, but that's something that you have the solemn judgment to just negate. 
So, let's go ahead and activate the copy of Cross Domination. We've gotten one pop, one negate, or, or two negates, essentially, with the copy of Last Stand, and we have the Crooked Crown. So, at this point, you can activate the Crooked Crown, and during your main phase, you can special summon the Magical Musketeer monster from your hand, and if you, your opponent, um, and if you do, if your opponent's main monster zone uh, currently is unused, then that monster zone can't be used at all. So we're going to activate this card in a position that one of our Magical Musketeers is probably not going to occupy, and we're going to special summon out our Caspar. Now, at any point, if your opponent activates a spell or trap, you can drop the last stand and negate whatever they activate, which is really cool to be able to just negate it. Now, keep in mind, right here, you have a Link 4 monster that you can link into. So we're going to go ahead and Link Summon. So you could have a couple of options here, okay? If you wanted to go for something like a copy of Nightmare Unicorn, you could link away the three copies of Caspar, Calamities, and uh, Caspar, and then discard the copy of Solemn Judgment and bounce a card off the field, which is really cool, and I really like that card effect. Um, you also have a couple of other options that you could go into. You could go into... Um, you couldn't go into Appaloosa because that requires... Well, you could go into Appaloosa, actually. It does require uh, two plus monsters with different names, except for tokens. So you could link away a copy of Caspar and a copy of Calamities, or both your Caspars, into something else. Like a Hippo Shinigan, and then go into your copy of Appaloosa with three monsters that have different names and have three extra negates on board. If you want to go that route and have a judgment set. So basically you have four negates. Or... You could go into a Boral Sword, which is what I would recommend if you think you can OTK your opponent, by linking all these away and then going directly into Boral Sword, swinging at your opponent for whatever amount of damage you can, and having the Judgment to back up the Boral Sword, which is another option. If you want to go defensive, go for Appaloosa. If you want to go offensive, go Boral Sword. So... That's it for this test hand. Let me get into the next test hand. That is just a very simplistic test hand for this deck. Um, that was a really good test hand too because this deck basically, like I said, it's it's not it's not a super complicated deck because basically what you're doing is is you're special summoning you're normal summoning a monster and activating a spell or trap to getting it to go snowballing through. Now I will mention you guys that this deck is extremely reliant on the normal summon, so sometimes that is kind of its Achilles heel is when you lose the normal summon you kind of, you don't lose right away because you can always set spells or traps to get you to the next turn for the normal summon, but that's where you start kind of running into some issues with the deck. So let's get into our second test hand and see how we do. So for our second test hand, let's see what we can get. So for the second test hand, we're going to draw, and I think we went first the last time, so we're going to go second this time. So last stand, really good. Uh, double or nothing, not great to see right off the bat, because you want to search it normally. But sometimes, like with any deck, as you guys know, you're going to draw the Garnet of the deck, and that's our Garnet of the deck. Cross Dom is really good. Doc is pretty good, because he recovers stuff, uh, ironically, because he's the Doctor. And we're going to draw into an Ash Blossom. But since we're going second, we do get one more card, which is going to be Kid Brave. That's really good. That recovered the entire hand. Because to begin with, you didn't really have, you had a Garnet, you had a one negate, two, three negates. You had three negates and a garnet. Eh, not that great. So let's say we're going first, or let's go say we're going second. We're going to discard the ash right off the bat because we're going to negate something on our opponent's side of the field. It's just going to happen. You're going to go one for one with the ash, maybe a two for one with the ash because you're going to they're going to discard something in the graveyard for like a copy of one for one uh, to send a monster from their hand, special summon a monster from the deck, and you're going to ash it to negate it, just for instance. Um, but then we have all these other cards in our hand, which is great. So we're going to always start out with the Kid Brave because he's going to net us some other cards. So normal summon that Kid Brave. Remember, if your opponent has a spell or trap, special summon it to the column that they have a spell or trap in. So we're going to normal summon our Kid Brave to this position. Then we can activate the effect of Cross Domination to reduce an opponent's monster's attack by whatever amount. Let's say we reduce it down to zero, okay? We redu you're going to reduce it to zero and negate its effects. At this point, Kid Brave is going to trigger, letting us discard a Magical Musketeer, which I'm going to discard Doc, because we already used our normal summon, we don't need Doc, and it's going to let us draw into two more cards. Now, we have a really interesting option. Because the Kid Brave went through, we can always 
link into our max, which is what we're going to do. Let's say that this time our opponent has four monsters on the field. They have four monsters on the field, and we're going to go for the Magical Musketeer max. So max's effect is going to trigger letting us search, or even letting us special summon. Let's go that route this time, and special summon. Let's say that they've got two back row, and we can special summon two monsters from our deck. We special summon the copy of Caspar to this position, and we special summon the copy of literally any other monster that we want. I would probably special summon the copy of Starfire to this position. Those two are the ones that I usually go for off of this effect, because they give me the most utility. Because Caspar is going to let me search, and Starfire is going to let me special summon from deck, and we also have two cards in the hand to help us resolve other effects, which is going to help us out immensely. So we're going to shuffle this deck up real quick, and we already pretty much have an OTK um, that's going to help us a lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to activate the copy of Desperado under the copy of Caspar, which is going to pop a monster on our opponent's side of the field, or pop a pesky spell or trap that they have that we just don't want to deal with. If they don't have any negates on the field, they're going to trigger the negate with this Caspar and the Desperado. Desperado is going to, or the Caspar is going to let us search another card from our deck to the hand, which I would probably grab a copy of either Needle Dancing at this point, or Crooked Crown, depending on how much you wanted to kind of push. Uh, let's go ahead and grab the, let's grab the Crooked Crown, because we already resolved the other stuff. Yeah, I think that would probably be the way I would go. Grab the Crooked Crown. I really wish I had a hollow printing, because then the entire deck would be hollow, which would be cool. So, let's grab the Crooked Crown. We're going to activate the Crooked Crown under the copy of Starfire. Starfire is going to trigger Special Summoning a Magical Musketeer from our deck, which we could grab a couple of different options. I probably would grab Calamities at this point, because she's going to let you extend a little bit more, and plus she's a level 4 monster, which we can overlay with to go into Utopia Double and swing at our opponent, because Utopia Double is such a good card in this deck, it's ridiculous. So, at this point, we can use the effect of Crooked Crown to Normal Summon, or Special Summon, another monster. Let's say at this point that our opponent tries to do a spell or trap on us. We can activate the copy of Last Stand under the Calamities, and the Calamities is going to trigger special summoning out our copy of Doc. Okay, now we have a nasty looking field. Now, okay, we have two Starfires, a Calamities, Caspar, and a Doc. That's a really good field. You could make a Link 4 in this situation, which is probably what I would do. I would probably go directly into a Link 4 by using something as simple as the Caspar, the Max, the Starfire, and the Doc. I would use these four monsters right here. All four have different names. And you can make an Appaloosa, okay? You can just make Appaloosa right away. Uh, right here. Where is she? There's Appaloosa. Okay. Which is going to help you go into the negation board to be able to go into your copy of Utopia Double. Or you could go into your Timeless and go for that route as well. But let's just say we go for Utopia Double. And then Utopia, we don't do the search. We just overlay like that. And then swing at our opponent, detach the material, negate the attack, drop the double or nothing, and then win the game. Because we have an Appaloosa and we have a 10,000 attack point Utopia Double. That's game and set. So, basically, that's the way the deck plays. It's really consistent. Um, it's really easy to establish boards like that because all you have to do, basically, is normal summon a monster, link into max, resolve the monster's effect on the field like a Caspar. Kid Brave, Caspar, and Starfire are the best ones as a starting opening card, but if you draw into Wild or any of the other ones, those are usually good to special summon off of the copy of Starfire which is really helpful, but this deck is actually really insane and is a sleeper deck to me to be a tier 1 contender after the ban list. To be honest with you guys, it's going to top. This deck has consistently topped recently, and it's a fun deck to play around with, and it's cheap now because they reprinted Starfire and Caspar, so everybody has access to it. So definitely tell me what you guys think of this test hand, and the deck profile will be in the description of every single one of the test hand videos. So definitely tell me what you think. Tell me what test hands you guys would like to see of the deck profiles I do have on the channel. I would love to hear from you guys. I have some other really cool ones lined up for you guys, but anyways, guys, this is Dark Arm Duels. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell on there so you can come part of the notification squad, and definitely check out the Patreon down in the description, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See you around, guys.